Welcome back to the channel everyone, it's Nick Armenis here and in today's video I'm going to cover off the best ASX stocks for November 2021. Guys, before we get into the content, please make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can be the first to know of any of my ASX picks. Just a quick disclaimer, as always, I'm not a financial professional, this is just my opinions, thoughts, uh, and it shouldn't constitute anything like professional advice, guys. So, as always, I like to cover off the interesting mid and large caps first, and then we'll move on to the smaller, I guess, riskier caps. The first stock I really like this month is Zero Limited, ASX ticker XRO. So what does Zero do for those of you that don't know? So Zero Limited provides a platform for online accounting and business services to small business. In essence, it's a tech app platform uh, that helps businesses with their accounting and also a bunch of other things. So it's currently trading at uh, $155.43. And as you can see over a, you know, a, a nine year period, it's done phenomenally. So the 52 week range, it's definitely trading up towards its 52 week highs and has been as low as $104.44, has a market cap of 23.23 billion. And uh, it's, it's a stock that while it has been on a belter, uh, it continues to deliver and deliver and deliver. And it's a hard one to bet against as you can see from this chart here guys. So let's get into my investment thesis for Zero. It's pretty simple. Zero has an extremely strong track record of earnings and customer growth. So that is super, super important. Uh, and while, you know, it, it's not necessarily to say that this will continue in the future, uh, if it continues to, if it has always done this, definitely puts, you know, it puts you in a pretty strong position to go, okay, this probably will continue, uh, particularly because they've got a great product and the addressable market is huge. So according to Goldman Sachs, Zero has actually only managed to grab 6% of global market share so far. So there's heaps there available. And while it does our competitors, Zero uh, continues to, you know, when put up against them, to be far superior in a lot of aspects. So the other great thing that Zero has is Zero has a third party app store, uh, and that's a key driver for growth and will likely deliver really strong returns for many years to come. So think of it as similar to Apple's um, you know, their app store, right? They make a lot of money from that, uh, billions of dollars. Uh, Zero is in a similar position, but more in the business to business market. So, you know, the returns there should actually be huge, 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 because uh, a lot of these apps are, are required for Zero to work properly for particular industries. And then again, you know, it's global expansion just continues to do well, uh, which isn't something that a lot of Australian companies actually manage to pull off. You know, Australian companies often struggle when they go overseas. Zero is one that just seems to have hit the nail on the head, probably because it's a great product. Caution, as I did say, it does have a very high PE ratio and it's definitely by, uh, expensive by pretty much every traditional metric. So this is more of a you know high quality growth name that isn't small, that you wanna to add to your portfolio uh, and get exposure to something that's growing quite fast, that uh, has a great track record. The next business, a little bit of a safer play is Ramsey Healthcare, ASX ticker RHC. So what does Ramsey Healthcare do? They're a global healthcare company with a strong reputation for operating high quality services and delivering ex excellent patient care. Ramsey hospitals and primary care clinics cater for a broad range of healthcare needs from primary care to highly complex surgery, as well as mental health care and rehabilitation. Think of it, private hospital provider, right? So it's currently trading at $71.33, has a market cap of 16.32 billion. It is definitely trading in the top end of its 52 week trading range. Uh, and it has been as low as $58.61. As you can see, this stock doesn't move around so much, pays a dividend, a bit more of a stable play, somewhere where you could park some cash or you know you, you want something that's a little bit safer. Investment thesis, so it's a strong defensive stock for protection in an economic downturn. So if you want something there that's gonna protect you if uh, times are not so good, this is definitely one of them. Um, people often need their service, so it's not a want. When you have a need, you kind of have a almost an inbuilt um, barrier against entry. Um, sorry, you, you have something there that, you know, it's, it's not something people can ease up on. They need to get it quite often, particularly if they have private healthcare. Uh, and the other thing is guys, uh, COVID restrictions are slowly easing up, which means a lot of the elective surgeries that were paused, postponed, cancelled, you know, there's a big backlog here to be filled. And if you look at the UK hospitals, they experienced a really big uptick once the economy started opening right back up. 
and all these COVID restrictions ended there. Um, it's also fairly cheap when compared to other healthcare stocks, guys, um, by most metrics. I know, you know, you look at it, and obviously different businesses, but CSL, ResMed, and all those other ones, much, 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 much higher, different businesses. But I mean, when it comes to healthcare, this is actually quite a low PE when it comes to healthcare stocks. Had a really good earnings update. You know, everything was quite strong. You know, in particular, EBIT lifted 29% to over 1.1 billion. So definitely a nice little company there to consider. The next one is Pilbara Min Minerals Limited, ASX ticker PLS. So what do they do? Pilbara Minerals Limited explores for, uh, develops and operates mineral resources in Australia. It's really a lithium play, guys. Uh, and the company primarily holds a 100% interest in the Pilgangura Lithium Tantalum Project located in the Pilbara region of Western Australia. It's currently trading at $2.27, and as you can see, it's had a really big spike sort of in the last 12 months, where it traded from $36 all the way up to $2.53. Has a market cap of $6.74 billion, uh, and it is one to consider because of the big growing demand in lithium, okay? So there's the global demand for lithium is growing at a huge rate. In fact, it more than doubled in the last four years alone. Think about the growth in EVs, batteries, and other clean technologies. I mean, our Prime Minister right now is in Glasgow talking about these exact things, right? Lithium is going to be needed. And at the moment, lithium prices are quite high, uh, which is great for cash flow. And I mean, you would imagine, obviously, you know, it's who knows, but given the strong demand that lithium prices should maintain and be strong for quite some time. Uh, strong quarterly update from these guys, you know, in the quarter up to September, record production and operating cash flow. And they entered a joint venture with the South Korean steel giant POSCO to develop a lithium hydroxide conversion facility. Uh, it will also include providing the facility with 315,000 tons per year of the lithium product. So guys, definitely one to consider if you want to get some exposure. It's one of the bigger, bigger lithium plays. Uh, so one to definitely add to the watch list and do a bit more research on. So here's my, I guess, higher risk small cap names I'm currently looking at. So as always, the way I use this, guys, is, uh, you know, these are things that I'm starting to do research in uh, and, and basically my watch list for the month. Uh, and then I don't always buy all of these names. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but just wanted to start that research process. So the first one is Silk Laser Australia, ASX ticker SLA. What do they do? They operate a, a franchise network of specialists. Uh, so they operate and franchise a network of specialist clinics that offer non-surgical aesthetic products and services. Its services include laser hair removal, non-invasive cosmetic injections, and skin and body contouring treatments. You've probably seen these in shopping centers. It's currently trading at $4.41, has a market cap of $233 million, uh, and its 52-week range is between $3.28 and $5.3. It's currently trading on a PE of 38.35, but it, um, it's a small business, it's growing fast, so don't be too put off by that PE. Investment thesis. This is almost a consumer staple, okay? I know it's not, but it almost is. People don't often cut skin and body treatments. People, in particular women, want to feel good. Uh, look at any shopping center, and these always have people in them. You know, you might be in a shopping center that's small, everything's up for lease, but this, you know, the, the actual, I guess, beauty and, and, and skin treatment places always have tenants. Um, with COVID lockdowns ending in Australia, they should see a good rebound in Victoria and New South Wales. Uh, they've actually exceeded prospectus forecasts, and think about how hard this is with so many companies that end up missing it. Um, they're planning to expand the network of stores to over 150. I believe they're at 110, 115, somewhere there at the moment. And a uh, strong balance sheet with over 44 million in cash, plenty of money to expand through acquisitions. So on this one, guys, what I find in Australia, anything that has uh, a link to retail or stores, what happens is you need to get in relatively early in the rollout, and then get out before the rollout slows down when it becomes a dividend pay, a big dividend pay, okay? So that's kind of how I play these businesses. Get in early, enjoy the store rollout, and then get out. So the next business is Anero Group Limited, ASX ticker EGG. So what does Anero do? Provides integrated marketing and communication services, including strategy, market research, insights, advertising, digital, public relations, communications, planning, design, events, management, direct marketing, basically a marketing company, guys. And the reason I kind of like these guys was because I run a marketing business myself. It's currently trading at $4.06, has a market cap of $357 million. Uh, it has traded between $1.65 and $4.17, so it's up there in the 52-week trading range, and it does pay a dividend of 2.19%. 
Investment thesis on this one, guys, very early on in my research, but strong track record of sustainable growth in revenue, EBITDA and margins. Good collection of marketing and media companies that high, have high margins. 60% of the clients have actually been with them for four years or more, which is great. Um, and it's got a good mix of project and retainer-based work. Retainer-based work is great because you have recurring revenue, but you're always gonna have some element of project-based work as well here. Guys, it's an industry that's growing in the in this space, uh, and these guys have a good selection of marketing agencies. They've got some really good clients, uh, and the PE of 13.7 looks relatively cheap on initial glances, and it has that nice little dividend. I know it said 2.19% in uh, Yahoo Finance, but I actually went and had a look in other areas, and it looks like it's 3.7, so just double check that one. So guys, that is it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and uh, I will see you in the next one. Please subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, if you enjoyed the video and leave a comment on any stocks you want me to cover off. Thanks guys.